Will grid soil sampling work from a livestock farm? This is part one, an introduction to the series. Hello, this is Randy Pepin, University of Minnesota Extension Educator, with technical support from Les Everett and Jose Hernandez. The project is funded by the McKnight Foundation. What is grid soil sampling? Here we have illustrated the differences between a traditional composite sampling and grid soil sampling. On the upper part of the screen, the typical composite test where you either walk or take a four-wheeler through your field and grab a series of core samples and then you blend those together and you send one sample off to the lab. On the lower lower part of the screen you have to illustrate where this particular field is divided up into nine cells. Within each one of those cells we then take a series of, of uh, soil core samples and blend those. So in this case we would have nine separate soil samples we send in. Grid soil sampling. Typically, grid soil sampling, we have two and a half acres for each cell. What do we want to analyze for? If we're going to use our grid soil sampling for using manure, we absolutely have to test for phosphorus and potassium to work with manure. With your typical test, basic test, you use your organic matter and pH too. Some people also test for zinc and sulfur. What's the cost of grid sampling? Somebody must take the sample. There are lab fees, then somebody must assemble the grid map. For the use of these case studies, we're using 10 and a quarter an acre, which has proven to be a very good in the middle of the road price for the people who are using grid sampling. When you get your results back, this is what you're going to see in grid maps like this. We've got the high and low areas of the field, and typically the areas that are low in a given nutrient are red, and the high areas are, are green or gray. You get a map like this for each one of the nutrients that you tested for. Why bother with grid soil sampling? The most driving force that there is, of course, is economics. People wanting to maximize the value of the manure and also any commercial fertilizer that they may be using. Another major important is for livestock farmers that have a nutrient management plan, just locating the areas of the fields that actually need some extra nutrients and, and put the manure on those areas rather than just everywhere. Then of course there is the environment. We just may want to have play a bigger part in not having excess phosphorus in certain areas of the fields. It has been no secret that commercial fertilizer prices have escalated a lot over the last few years. And certainly in 2012 and 2013 prices are certainly as high as they were in 2010 and 11. This has been a, ma a major in impetus into the system of people really looking at the value of manure and, and wanting to capitalize on it. I'd just like to illustrate a couple of things here. If you look at the relative N, P, and K levels that the corn needs, it is similar to what we see in this upper left corner of the screen. But if we go down to dairy, the dairy manure, we see that the N, relative N, P, and K levels of, of typical dairy manure is, is a little bit different. When we overlay that, and then we typically apply manure for a nitrogen requirement year after year, we can get things out of balance because we can cover our nitrogen needs but look at our phosphorus and our potassium. A lot of this potassium will get used up if we have alfalfa in a rotation but the relative needs of phosphorus is, is similar for alfalfa as it is corn so this phosphorus is a, is a major issue. Although most of you got here through the University of Minnesota Manure website I'd like to illustrate a couple things. Down here in the lower right is a, is a link to all the case studies that are used in this in this series as we illustrate them. Right here where it says manure application is a quick link to the spreadsheets that calculate the value of manure. There's three different ways of going through that. You can do it directly on the web. You can download a spreadsheet to your computer. I like that method the best because you're able to keep that for future reference. Or you can print out a sheet of paper and calculate it by hand. When you get to the link with the, for the economics of using manure, this is one of the pages that you work with. And you just work through this process and, and you'll, you'll get a value for your manure. This is the conclusion of, of the first part, the introduction to will grid soil sampling work for my livestock farm.